So there was a lot of comments going back and forth and even attacking me in some instance when I talked about the plantation slave for giving the white supremacist. Now you had all these people come out. There are black people who are very deceived and Christianity was used to deceive black people in a guise of forgiveness. That's not even biblically accurate. Then you had those who want to see black people constantly enslaved and have a mental dysfunction to forgive white supremacists for killing, beating, maiming, and having black people look at themselves in a dysfunctional manner. Now we're going to play some clips from the great Dr. Frances Cress Welsing. She was a clinical psychiatrist. She was very respected in our community and the sister passed away on January the 2nd, 2016. May she rest in power. But I want you to hear what she has to say about forgiveness in the guise of black people. Let's go ahead and roll those clips. Uh, uh, I can only repeat it, uh, that I think that, um, you see, just automatic forgiveness uh, when it comes to black people being harmed or killed or injured by people who classify themselves as white. We don't hear people who are white if they have uh, feel they have sustained some injury or harm from a black person. We don't hear them saying, I forgive, I forgive, I forgive. And I was saying in a talk uh, recently, uh, no one asked the white females who lined up and were accusing Bill Cosby of having sexually or date raped them. And no white person would say to them, one or more, or all of them, uh, a long time has passed. Don't you think it's time for you to forgive Mr. Cosby? Nobody would ever think of that. Do you see, nor would anybody think to ask a Semite of the Jewish religion, uh, well, have you forgiven the German people? Have you forgiven the Nazis for what they did? Do you, do you see, nobody would even think of saying that. So I think that it is a part of um, black people's tradition from tradition from the time of enslavement. Do you see where the slave master could beat the black person? And I could just envision the black person being beaten and the slave master or the slave mistress would be saying, say that you forgive me. Do you see? And then giving them another lash. Say that you forgive me. And so the black person doesn't have a choice but to say, I forgive, Master. I forgive. I forgive. I forgive. Um, and I don't want to show any disrespect to the mother of Mr. Walker. I mean, I certainly understand uh, what has happened to black people and where that pattern comes in. But when we were in formal slavery, uh, I heard a white female explain to a young black man, uh, this was at a race relations institute a number of years ago, and the young black man in a small group discussion, he said, I don't believe in racism, I'm a Christian. And an older white female said to him, son, we, meaning we white people, gave you that tradition. We gave you that religion. And we emphasized three things. Slave, obey your master. Turn the other cheek, and you will get your reward in heaven. And so that is the yoke that black people, uh, I say, by and large, are still under. Uh, and most black people are not thinking about uh, or understanding that we are in a total system structure of racism. Well, see, you could not, you can't run an oppressive state or uh, plantation or a prison and have the inmates become angry at, at the jailer. 
so you, if possible, you engage in the psychological warfare of teaching them a philosophy of forgiveness. Now, the prisoner or the slave on the plantation hasn't, hasn't been let free. The prisoner in the prison hasn't been said, we forgive you, and so your sentence is terminated. No one is speaking to the prisoner or the slave on the plantation in that way. But the plantation is run by beating, well, first and foremost, I would say, and uh, maybe somebody will be offended, I would hope not, that when you give the enslaved Africans an image of God that is the same image of the slave master and say that you must behave yourself so that this image of God, which is the same image as the slave master, so that God will love you and admit you into heaven. You must forgive the slave master. Now, that was the position that black people were in for hundreds of years during the years of formal enslavement. And what could they do about it when they were beaten and killed at whim? You see, and so that's when these ideas were implanted, and we must begin to step back and view them more objectively and understand that this is an aspect of the maintenance of oppression. And those black people who are admonishing black people that they should forgive, I would say that those people have been harmed by having their self-respect as black people annihilated, whether they're conscious of it or whether they are subconscious. Now, on this next clip, you're going to hear Dr. Francis Crest Wellsing lay out when we should forgive. Let's go ahead and roll the clip. And if we as black people decide that we are going to respect ourselves, and this is one of the things that has happened to black people in the 500 years of our oppression, including the phase of slavery, formal slavery, is that black self-respect has been completely annihilated. And so, you know, we say, okay, I forgive, I forgive, and then we take the pain and frustration out on each other. It's just like in South Africa, truth and reconciliation. So the people who brutalize black people are allowed to go unpunished. But the pain that is inside of black people goes out towards one another. And the system of racism, white supremacy, continues. So I am making the recommendation for black people's mental health, that black people take the position that all of, the, all of these things that we are dealing with, the killing of black men every week, every other day, the incarceration of black men, the unjust sentencing, uh, gentrification, the removal of black people from urban centers across this country, that all of this is the face of racism, white supremacy. And black people have to take the position. We're not going to be in the position of saying we forgive. No, what we're going to insist upon is number one, that racism, white supremacy as a total system structure be recognized. And number two, when that system has been brought to an end and replaced with a system of justice, then the consideration of forgiveness of that, that won't even be in order. Because the system of injustice will have been removed and a system of justice established. Now, that's my position as a black psychiatrist, and I would say that I'm certainly recommending that as important for black people's mental health 
in this system that the foundation of the position is that we are going to have respect for ourselves second to none. And instead of denying and making apologies for the system of racism and white supremacy, that we are going to hold people who classify themselves as white because the only reason for the white classification is to take advantage of the established and structured system of racism and white supremacy. And that we are going to hold people who classify themselves as white responsible. We're not going to spend any time hating white people. But we are going to hold every person who classifies him or herself as white responsible for changing the system. If they want to take a position that they're not racist, well, then stop the people who classify themselves as white who are. Don't come and join black people. Take the John Brown position and stop the people who are engaging in the practice of racism and white supremacy. And, you know, that's not just calling somebody nigger or the N-word if you want to play euphemisms. But, no, the system of racism, as stated by Neely Fuller, functions in all areas of people activity. Economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. Dr. Francis Cress Wilson dropped a lot of jewels in this clip. Now, the thing about the automatic forgiveness, when a person comes up to you and asks you for forgiveness because they've seen the error in their ways, and if you genuinely think they have a repentant heart, then it's up to you to forgive them or not at that time period. And I've never told anyone don't forgive anybody. And I always say it is up to you to forgive a person and you don't have to, if you don't want to, but you've seen all these people coming out acting a fool because I said not to forgive a white supremacist. Notice none of them say it about you need to forgive black people. We need to look over and love black people. Never heard any of that. They were just fighting for the right for black people to keep on foolishly forgiving white supremacists when they should not be forgiving them at all. In that video, that man didn't ask to be hugged. That man didn't ask for anything. This guy chose to do that on his own. But as we stated so many times, you wouldn't do that for a black person at all. You see, this automatic forgiveness comes from the plantation. They use that love your enemies on black people, but America doesn't love its enemies. See, they tell black people to forgive, forgive your uh, enemies, forgive people, and you'll have your reward in heaven like Dr. Francis Cress Wilson said. But notice they don't forgive their enemies. They don't love their enemies. They don't tell the Jewish people to forgive Adolf Hitler and the Nazis. They don't tell uh, American whites to forgive Osama bin Laden or any ISIS or any other group. You don't say to forgive them. You don't say to love them. You never say that crap. As she talked about in this piece, what about the white women that came out about Bill Cosby? And then nobody said it's been a long time. Like she said, it's time to forgive. You never open your mouth to forgive about anything else. Only when it comes to black people, because you know that yoke of bondage in their mind, the yoke of bondage of Christianity that they put in black people's mind, the slave master version of Christianity, they know they got black people on that. Black people have raised their children and they've lived their lives for centuries thinking that I must forgive. If you walk up in a black church and you see a white Jesus, you already know they are already deceived because Jesus was my color had hair like wool. He wasn't a white man. So I remember the first time as a child when I didn't know any better and I seen a picture of Jesus by my skin color. And I'm like, who is that supposed to be? And they say, Jesus said, Jesus, Jesus not black. And it, and I, it, it just really baffled me at the time period. And then later on in life, I realized that was the right depiction of Jesus. He wasn't a white man. 
You see, as you heard Dr. Francis Cress Wilson said, they told the slaves to forgive and be like Jesus. And yet Jesus, they painted him to look like them so they can have a godlike uh, thought process toward the white man. So that's why you have this unhealthy forgiveness that we have. Yet we take it out on the black man and black woman of America because we're not appropriating that right anger and frustration on the people who has something to do with it. Now, she talked about when you should forgive. Basically, when the system of white supremacy ends and a system of justice and equality replace it, then you can forgive because you know what? It'll be over with. See, these people come up to you and tell you, well, you never been a slave and I never enslaved anybody, but yet you're living in a system that was created from slavery. You're living in a system where you're benefiting from it. So you're just as guilty as your ancestors. You haven't made recompense of it. You haven't even repented for it. Proper repentance would be a reparation. And your friends, the white liberal, ask them about a reparation. Why should they going to tell you? You can talk about the Republicans. They're racist. Please. Them liberals are worse than them. And they play you all the time to make you think they're not like that. But they are. A lot of black people starting to open their eyes to this liberal. They're not our friends. But the thing is, if you want to do something, as Dr. Francis Chris Wilson said, white folks, then create your own groups like the abolitionists, but you know they hide the history of the abolitionists in America, and you fight to end racism. Because you can do more than black people can due to the, your white privilege and how you can move around in America. So if you don't want to do nothing about it, that's why you're going to keep feeling this quote-unquote white guilt. Because this God making you feel responsible for the injustice that you are doing to people in this nation. So we should not automatically forgive anybody. Forget that. I'm not forgiving a white supremacist when, if they do something to me or they do something to my people. Why? For what? Sitting up there crying in the courtroom telling Dylan Roof, I forgive you. And that man didn't even ask you for nothing. He said, they're laughing that he killed you. But you tell them about forgiveness on oh, the good Christian people. Oh my God, they're so wonderful. They're strong people. Please. They want us to stay so weak, docile, and so they can keep overrunning us and misusing us on our dysfunction that's been happening for over 400 years. And I know, I know, I hate everybody. I hate white people. I hate because, no, the fact is, you would, would you hate? You hate the truth being spread. You hate black people opening their eyes. That's what you hate because nothing I say about hating you. Hating is a wasted time for me. Hate is a wasted emotion. I can appropriate that wasted time and emotion to fixing my community. And that's what I want to do. And us having an unhealthy love and having an unhealthy forgiveness when everybody else is not even doing that's not even right. You know, what we do as black people, we've been doing this for hundred years. It'd be like you be in a relationship with a woman or a man. They cheat on you. You just automatically forgive them. They didn't ask you to forgive them and they take your forgiveness. Then they cheat on you again. Same thing. They keep cheating, keep cheating, keep cheating. Well, until you make a consequence to anyone, that's when they're going to get it. And when I said black people need to create a consequence for these actions, like Martin Luther King did, created consequences for those actions, then they get it. When you leave a relationship and you say, look, I'm leaving because you're cheating on me. I'm not going to put up with this. Then the person going to realize, oh, cheating is wrong because I lost them now. All before, they're going to keep cheating because you kept forgiving them and you kept staying in a relationship. When Martin Luther King saw that black people being treated wrong, what did he say? He said, you go tell them that God sent us by here and say, we, you, we are his children. And you're going to treat us right. And if you're not prepared to treat us right, we're going to remove our money. We're going to remove our economic power away from you. And Martin Luther King did that so many times. They say, be like Martin Luther King. That's be like Martin Luther King, creating a consequence. Also, they would be sitting up here trying to deceive you about our brother Martin Luther King and say he was so loving and forgiving. He would be ashamed. Well, how will we know what he's going to say to us to instruct us if you didn't kill him? If he was so loving and forgiving, then why is it he didn't die of old age? That's just a question that I have. This great loving man that y'all have almost made him a deity in this country, yet y'all easily forget that this man was sniped to death. This man couldn't become an old man and die like he should have. So please don't use Martin Luther King. That's not a good example. 
because Martin Luther King made y'all pay every time y'all treated us wrong. He knew that loving and forgiving wasn't going to get it. He knew economic boycotts was going to get it. That's what he knew. And King was so powerful with that. That's why they had to kill him. So please stop because I, you right. I want to be more like Dr. King. Let me get in that kind of position. I'm going to do just what King did. I'm not going to be in a pro street protesting and screaming. My life matter. You don't care about that crap. All you care about is money. And that's what's going to hurt you is the money. And you don't want black people to open their eyes and take their money away from you. You don't want that. So in essence, what we're trying to say in Dr. Francis Chris Wilson says, don't automatically forgive, hold them accountable, create a consequence. If they do you wrong by taking your money away, taking away your talent, taking away your time, taking away your relationships, they have to see that's what they're doing is wrong because you keep loving and forgiving and keep giving them your money. Then they're going to think what they're doing is okay because you never created a consequence. So leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about this. Share the video, like the commentary, subscribe for more news stories.